It is not for some collector's curiosity. The thing I've really loved most about collecting Star Wars is collecting original screen-used props. Um, I was lucky enough to get a piece that I'm going to show today, and it is this. I'm uh, pulling off the wall here is uh, exactly what you think it is. It is an Endor Rebel rifle. Um, this was uh, a gun that would have been rented by the production during Return of the Jedi 1983 uh, from the Stembridge Gun Rental Company. Um, and what's interesting about collecting guns specifically from the uh, props of Star Wars is that they all have serial numbers. And so when the guns were rented, they were brought onto the production. They would fit it up with science fiction parts or sci-fi parts, what a lot of people call greeblies. Um, they would use them for filming. And then when they were done, they would strip the greeblies back off and return the guns to the gun rental company. Um, so the person that was in charge of that for Return of the Jedi uh, is James Shop. Um, and so he kept very detailed records on those, uh, on the guns. This is one of probably a dozen live fires that would have been used on the set, which means uh, they're plugged, so they don't actually fire any actual ammunition, but they would have, uh, the, the, as you can tell, the trigger still works. Um, the safety still works. Those sorts of things are still functional on the gun so that in close-up shots, this thing would look real because it is real. This is a real um, M16 AR-15 combo, uh, the receiver and the pipes and then all that kind of thing and the, the barrel and all those sorts of things are all real, whereas the scopes and things are all, you know, just made up. Um, on this particular gun, some of the Greeblies are real, uh, meaning they're production used. Um, whereas some of them aren't, they're reproductions. Um, and the reason for that, like I said, is because the, par the parts would have all been stripped off and, um, and probably thrown in a box. So what you'll often find is the gun with no parts or the parts with no gun. Um, so I have one of those too. I have parts with no gun um, as well, not for this gun, for a different gun. Um, and then Stembridge auctioned off all of their, all of their rental guns uh, later on. And obviously Star Wars fans went crazy knowing full well that those serial numbers could be tracked. Um, and so the provenance on this is absolutely solid. There's, there's no question about the fact that this was production used in Return of the Jedi. This gun is probably my, my most valuable piece. Um, these guns or guns like them, Stormtrooper rifles and these sorts of guns, uh, were selling in sort of the 10, 15, $20,000 range um, about 10 years ago. And now they probably sell more in the fifty to sixty thousand dollar range. Um, Star Wars props have gone up considerably. Um, what I will say is, I am not a rich man by any stretch of the imagination. I collected props um, by trading up. I bought a lot of small props. I traded those for mid level props. I bought a bunch of those. I did that a bunch of times. Then traded a bunch of mid level props for larger props. Now I have about a dozen really good pieces that I have curated over time. It has taken me about 20 years to acquire 10 or 12 really excellent pieces. And this is, this is the prize of my collection. This is probably the one that's worth the most. This came from Prop Store of London. They're the ones who acquired it after the Stembridge auction. Um, so it has their certificate of authenticity with it. They are the go-to store for props and authentic stuff. Um, especially for Star Wars, the guys that work there. They are so knowledgeable. They've written books about Star Wars props. They are um, constantly talking and uh, blogging and tweeting and writing about Star Wars collecting, how to make sure you have authentic stuff. Um, I really want to caution collectors about authenticity. Do not take anyone's word for anything. Um, make sure that you're doing your back history. Even if you think it might be real, double check, triple check, quadruple check, try to go back to the original sources. You know, most of my props either come from their original source uh, with a certificate of authenticity signed by that person, uh, literally the person that made it um, or the person that, uh, that rented it or acquired it from the production. Once they go through other hands, they can be tampered with, they can be swapped out. I had a piece that came, it was another gun actually that came from a collection that was supposed to be a completely legitimate collection. It was a uh, a Mauser, not Hans, but a um, an Empire one um, that ended up being a fake. Essentially, what we found out through multiple sources were that there was an airsoft gun version made in the 90s of that gun, and there was a serial number in that airsoft gun. And when they made the mold for my gun, 
that transferred into the mold. And so by looking at that reverse serial number, we could tell that it was actually molded off of a, a, a mid 90s airsoft pistol and not in fact a real World War II era Mauser. Now, what I will say about these, these particular rifles, while this one is a live fire and was partially a real gun, the production couldn't rent all of the guns they needed. So they would take molds off of the real guns once they'd assembled them and they would make resin copies. So some of what you see in the indoor scenes is actually a guy running around with a big hunk of plastic in his hand. And those are mostly for the background guys, um, guys that didn't have to actually fire a weapon or didn't have to show their weapon up close, or in the case of pistols, pistols that would have been used in holsters um, or what we call holster fillers. Um, and they're never pulled, they're just flapping around on people's belts. And you'll find that even a character that had a live fire gun will also have a holster filler for stunts. They used to make them out of resin back in the original trilogy days. They now make them out of rubber because the rubber, uh, the rubberization that they can do now is much more realistic than before. Lots, lots fewer air pockets and uh, they can paint them more realistically with metallic paint and all that kind of thing to make them look real on screen. And I have some of those as well that I can show on a later date. Specifically, this gun uh, is a rare relic in that original trilogy props for the first movie were largely tossed out in the trash. And then after, once Lucas realized what kind of a hit he had on his hands, he opened up the Lucasfilm archive. And from Empire Strikes Back through Return of the Jedi, most of the props are, um, are, are kept or housed in the Lucasfilm archives. So you'll very rarely find a Return of the Jedi prop, especially masks and weapons and things like that, unless they were rented because they're in the archive and Lucas owns them. So. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a rare sort of honor for me to own it, uh, and I'm I'm really I'm really happy to be able to show that off. Be real careful, and I think it's a good point what you said. And if stories sound yeah. too good to be true, because they're just there in at, at ranch uh, ranch at Obi Wan, there has been some stuff that has disappeared in the past, and people are yep. looking for it. And yep. if you end up if you get a hold of that stuff, you're going to have to prove that. You, first off, they're going to take it but you're going to have to prove that you didn't intentionally do it. So make sure that, you know, you need yep. the provenance of a lot of this stuff. And that's very important, especially with yep. this high-end stuff. Do not go into high-end yep. collecting if you're not going to get the provenance. And if it's too good to be true, pass on it. Because you know what? It, it probably is. of the time is too good to be true. Okay. And there, and there yep, has exactly. been, you can look it up and I'm not going to get into all the stuff and how it was done and everything like that. But stuff has, has been missing from both the archives before and both and the ranch and, in, I'd be very when they did the when they did the uh, the the special editions for the movies, they released some props from the archives to be reused in the new filming uh, to add in scenes. And during those reshoots, because people knew the value of Star Wars props at that point, many prop well, I shouldn't say many some props walked off the set and have still not been found, as far as I know. Um, the, the, something like this was never owned by Lucasfilm. Um, this, this rifle was always owned by Stembridge. Stembridge. It was merely rented by Lucasfilm. This was bought in a very public auction from the Stembridge gun rental. It was bought by a very reputable dealer. I have the provenance all the way back to its original source. There's no question about this. But Lucas, when he owned the company, was very rabid about getting props back for the archive, even if they had been legitimately sold. Yeah. So now I don't think Disney is quite as uh, rabid about that as Lucas was. But do be careful that if you're going to go out and, and, and drop big money on this, A, make sure that what you're looking at is authentic. And, and find the sources. Talk to people. Um, reach out. Find out if, uh, if other people know about where this came from. Other things that they may, have, they may know. Other people they may know. Maybe they know the person that made it. And they will. And they'll help you. Um, if as long as you're not arrogant about it, just you know, approaching these people in, in a way that say, "Hey, look, I'm I'm thinking of dropping this money on this piece. What do you think about it? Do you think it's authentic? If not, please be honest with me. Um, why do you think it's not, or why do you think it is? You know, you can reach out to me. I can help. I might even be able to get you in contact with some of the right people. If it's a Star Wars prop, that's what I'm. I'm I specialize in, but I am certainly not the expert. I am certainly not the the guru of this stuff. There are other people that know a lot more than I do. But secondarily, make sure that 
that you're not talking about a stolen piece or, or that comes from a source that might be shady because it could get claimed from you and you're not going to get any money back for it. They're just going to take it because they own it. It's theirs. Um, and so do, do be careful about that. If it, it like, like Marco said, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. I highly encourage making uh, relationships with people, learning first, talking a lot to people, doing your research. There's tons of books on this stuff. There's tons of online resources. There are tons of people very willing to talk to you about this stuff. There's different levels of it too. And hopefully uh, we'll show you different yeah. stuff too. And a lot of that stuff has been, there has, and there has been a lot of reproduction on some of this stuff. And hopefully we'll later on, some of these, we'll yep. show you some of the reproductions and even some of the first reproductions are do pretty well. Cause people, there's only one of a lot of these things. And, and with Lucas and we'll do a whole Lucas episode one time, what he did and how he kind of was like, it's mine. You know, it's mine. You're never going to get this and you won't, and uh, you won't get it. So with that being right. said, like even some of the reproductions go pretty well, but that's really, that's an awesome piece. It's amazing. It's great how you explain that. And the other thing about telling the truth on stuff, whenever you look at one of these collectibles, okay, when it's the storyline has to match up, make sure you do timelining too, right? If the thing looks too good to yep. be true, if it's supposed to be, you know, like even that, like if it's doesn't have a single scratch on it, remember these guys are throwing, think, use a little common sense when you're buying some of these things or looking into it. If it doesn't have a scratch, yeah. you're kidding me. It's a rental piece and nobody threw that thing around. Nobody dropped that thing once. Nobody, it, come, it looks perfectly brand new. Good luck. Cause yeah. that's not how it comes in certain things in modern stuff, dings and stuff like that will deter it. But in a lot of these across the board, not just in star Wars collectibles, if you get into other type of collectibles, when it is a real use that actually adds some, add some to it. The dings add something to it, especially if you can get the storyline behind how the ding got there or the blood on an item got there or something else got there. It adds value. And the so. dings can help you screen identify a piece. The, the dings and scratches can help you screen identify a piece. And there are three very distinct levels of prop collecting. You have the top level, which is screen used or screen ID'd, meaning that I know that the one I'm holding is that one in that clip right there that's the high level then you have the you have the 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 production the screen used like you know it was in there but you you can't positively identify yours on screen there wasn't just one gun for han he had at least two live fires he had a holster filler he had what's called the throwdown blaster which is the one he puts down on the forest floor um there's so there's at least four or five different ones there's a different one that luke used which is actually a han blaster um so you might be able to tell which one's yours. If you were to look on screen, you could see it and identify it from the scratches. Um, but in a lot of cases, those are background guns and you might not be able to identify it, but you know that it was used. That's sort of the middle level. Then you have production made or production used. It means it was meant to be used, but you can't be sure that it was actually used in filming. And even a gun like this, right? My guess is multiple days of shooting in the forest in the Redwoods Different guys used this gun on different days. They they were probably all sitting on a table, a dozen of them or 20 of them, and they said, okay, go check the gun out, and we'll see you on set in 10 minutes. They didn't pull the same gun off the table every day. Uh, they just pulled a gun off the table every day. So you don't know that even though you see the guy who plays Rex in one scene, 10 seconds later might have been a different day of filming. He may be holding a completely different gun. So, you know, be aware that, what you're buying may just be production made or production used, meaning it was meant to be used on screen, but might not have been. You have definitely screen used, meaning it was used, definitely used in filming, but you can't positively identify yours on screen. And then you have screen ID'd, which is, I know that it's that one. I'm positive. Everything matches, scratches, pieces missing, broken something or other. And you'll pay a premium each level you go up. That's cool, man. Like, it's cool to know somebody that has one. You know what I mean? Because, like, a lot of this stuff from Star Wars, you're going to see it does not get out. <laughs> it doesn't get out. It doesn't. Especially no, it doesn't. Three. And people that have it don't relinquish it. I mean, most of the collectors that I know that have some of the good stuff, they, they will not sell anything. They don't care what it's worth. They don't care if it's worth $10 million. It's theirs. It's their childhood. It's not going anywhere. I'm telling you, I'm not selling any of my stuff. Yeah. I'm going to pass it down to my kid. You know, it's, it's just, it's not going anywhere. This stuff's too important to me. Um, yeah, fine. Call me a nerd all you want, but I mean, every major milestone in my life has an equal, an equal star Wars milestone to go along with it. I'm really entrenched in everything star Wars and, and the props are, are my closest 
my closest ability to touch the films. Um, no, I don't think that gun is really from Endor. I'm not that guy. But uh, but to me, that's that's the closest I can get to the films. I can touch a real piece of, of film history. Um, I'm proud to own it. Um, it's always on display. I love when people come and take 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 it down off the wall. If you're ever at my house, I want you to hold it. I want you to pull the trigger. It's, it's fun. It's meant to be shared. And I love to share it. And I hope you enjoyed seeing it.